What's up guys, this is Tech It Out, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install Kali Linux as a virtual machine using VirtualBox. So, let's get started. All right, so let's dive right into it. So first thing you need to do is go to your uh, desktop and we are going to download VirtualBox. Um, I will put that in the first link in the description. Just go to the website and hit download for Windows, assuming you're on Windows. If you're on Mac, then you download it on Mac, but this tutorial will be done on a Windows computer. So I actually already have VirtualBox installed, so I'm not going to reinstall that. It's very straightforward though, just a typical EXE installation. Then you need to go to the next link in the description that will take you to the Kali uh, ISO download page. We're gonna hit install our images here, and then under x86-64, go ahead and hit this download button. If it blocks the download, go ahead and hit allow, and then run it again. Now, while this Kali installer is downloading, we can go ahead and actually open up VirtualBox, assuming you already have it installed. Okay, so you can see we've got VirtualBox open here. I'm gonna shrink down the window just a touch. All right, now I already have a Kali Linux machine, but I'm going to make a new one for the sake of this video. I'm just going to call it New Kali. And you can go ahead and leave the uh, folder for where you want it to be stored as a default folder, or you can set it to whatever you want. Now you need to go down here and choose Linux and then choose, um, scroll until you see Debian 64-bit. Now hit next. For the memory, two gigs is fine, but I would recommend at least two CPUs. Uh, and then go ahead and create a virtual hard disk. This will be what you use for storage. Um, you probably need a minimum of about 50 or so gigabytes for Kali to be able to run well and for you to have some storage to use. So go ahead and hit next and finished. And now our virtual machine is just about done. We can go ahead and go into settings, hit advanced, and for the shared clipboard and drag and drop settings, assuming you want to be able to use those, go ahead and hit bi-directional on both of those. Oh, and I almost forgot one more thing you can change if you want, this is totally optional, is using the network as a bridge adapter. Basically what this allows you to do is for your Linux system to have its own IP address separate from your Windows machine so that you can do things like SSH um, and remote into your Linux virtual box. So go ahead and hit OK. Okay, so as you can see, our Kali ISO has finished downloading. It should show up here in your downloads. There it is. So now we can go to VirtualBox, go to Settings, and go to Storage. Click on this empty disk here. Go ahead and click this little disk and hit Choose a Disk File. Now we can go into our downloads and hit Kali Linux Installer. Hit Open. And before you close out, go ahead and go to Systems and remove the floppy disk. You want to have your optical uh, as your first boot order so that it actually boots into this Kali ISO. So now you can click OK. And now we are ready to start our machine. All right, so now we can go ahead and click Graphical Install. It's going to want to capture your mouse and keyboard. Everything can be done by the keyboard. Hit Graphical Install. And now we are in the setup menu. So as you can see, you can choose the language, hit continue, your location, your keyboard, and language, of course. And now it is time to name your PC. So I could just, you could literally just leave it as Kali. I'm just gonna make it new Kali so that it matches uh, what I titled it early, earlier. Oh, and that's an invalid name. So you know what, can't have underscores. You can choose to set up a domain name or not. You can just hit continue. I'm not going to. I'm just going to hit continue. And then I'm going to put in my name here for the user. Continue. And make a password. The classic. 1234. I don't know what I typed there. but Set up your time zone. And now it's going to ask you how to partition for me. I'm just going to use the first option, hit continue, and then it'll show the VDI that you made earlier. Go ahead and click continue. All files in one partition. And hit continue again. It says write changes to disk. You're going to want to click yes and hit continue. 
Now it is actually installing the Linux operating system. This is going to take a moment, so I'll be back to you when it's done. Okay, so now it's going to ask you about the different desktop environments that you want to have installed. I'm going to check off all of the options above because you can always change it um, once you actually get into Kali. So go ahead and click continue. If it asks you to choose a default display manager, just use GDM3, hit continue. Okay, so now that Kali has finished doing its thing, you'll get to this install grub bootloader screen. Go ahead and click yes, hit continue. Then go ahead and select this boot device um, for the bootloader installation, hit continue. And it's going to install. All right, so now we should go ahead and click continue and it's going to reboot into Kali automatically. All right, when you get to the screen, just click here. It'll ask you to capture the thing. All right, and now we are in Kali. Type in your password that you made earlier. All right, so congratulations. You have now installed Kali Linux in a virtual machine. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss any future content. As well as if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. And if you have any video ideas, also leave them down in the comments below and you never know. Maybe I'll get to one of your videos. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this helped you. Um, I'll catch you in the next video.